This lesson will help you uh, put together and compare the different methods you've learned to solve trig problems so far and how to decide when to use which method. Go ahead and fill in the top three boxes in your chart. So really trig problems fall into one of two categories. Either it's a problem where you're trying to solve for a side of the triangle or it's a problem where you are trying to solve for an angle. So depending on what you're solving for, you've got different possible methods to use. The nice thing is if the x or the variable you're trying to solve for is in an angle, you only have one method that works to solve for angles. Inverses, like inverse cosine, inverse sine, and inverse tangent. That would be the second half of the 8.3 lesson. However, if the x is on a side instead of a, inside of a corner, then you have more options. If you're solving for a side of a right triangle, your first thing to check is to see if you can use Pythagorean's theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. A good rule to remember is that Pythagorean's theorem is really only going to be helpful if you already know two sides of your right triangle. If you have two sides that already are labeled with, with numerical lengths, then go for it. Use Pythagorean theorem. It's one of the most straightforward methods and it works well. However, if you only know the length of a single side, Pythagorean theorem is not going to be helpful and you're going to check to see if you could use one of these other two methods. Special right triangles. Draw that quick sketch of the two special right triangles, both their angles, 45, 45, 90, 30, 60, 90, and the side labels. So anytime you know only one side of your triangle, but you notice it's a 45, 45, 90 triangle, or a 30, 60, 90 triangle, you're using these patterns as shortcuts to solve for the missing sides. Now sometimes you're only given the length of a single side of a triangle, but special right triangle tricks are not going to work for you because it's not one of these two types of triangles. So let's say uh, you know only one side, but when you look at the corners, it's maybe one corner something like 28 degrees when that happens, your only method of solving is SOHCAHTOA. You are going to use trig ratios like sine, cosine, or tangent to solve the problem. So on the quiz you're going to take next class, one of the key skills you're going to demonstrate is figuring out when to use which method. So this chart will be a very useful study tool. So let's practice that. Take a look at this diagram. Looking at the chart, which method would help you solve this one? Well, you have numbers for two out of the three sides. If you already know two of the sides, and you're solving for a third one, that would be a case where you could use Pythagorean theorem. Which side is your C? Excellent, the hypotenuse is your C. The right angle always points to the longest side. Go ahead and solve. When you plugged in A, B, and C, and simplified, you then got x squared by itself, and when you square rooted to get x completely by itself, you should get 5. Question 2. Look at the chart. Which method would you use to solve this one? Like question one, this is still a problem where x is on a side. So we're using uh, the left and bottom half of the, the chart you filled in. 
you only know a single side length, only one number on a side. So that means Pythagorean theorem is completely ruled out. If you only know one side, then you only know A, or you only know B, or you only know C. It's not enough to solve. So it's not a special right triangle either. It's not 30, 60, 90, or 45, 45, 90. So if you said it's so good to well, well done. Is the sine, cosine, or tangent? So if you label the opposite side and hypotenuse side and adjacent side, you really only have information about the opposite and hypotenuse sides. So if you said sine, because that's a so in Sokotoa, the one that has O and H in it, well done. Finish solving. You type sine 25 in your calculator. Make sure your calculator is in degrees mode. Put that over one so you can cross multiply. If you got roughly 17.3, well done. Question three, which method would you use to solve this one? If you said special right triangles, excellent. Notice how if this corner is 30 and this corner is 90, to add up to 180, the missing one would have to be 60. So it's a 30, 60, 90 triangle. Take a moment to label the sides. The short side is always A. The hypotenuse is always 2A. And the medium side is always A radical 3. So what would X be? X equals 2A. And you already know A is 5, so X equals 10. What would Y equal? y equals a square root of 3, so you plug in 5 for a, y equals 5 square root 3. Question 4. Which method would you use to solve this problem? Notice how this time, x is in an angle, not on a side. If you're solving for an x or a y or other variable in the corner of your triangle, to get the measure of that angle, you have to use inverse Sokotoa. So, would this be a case of using sine, cosine, or tangent? You have an O and H, so if you said sine, well done. Finish solving. To get sine by itself, or to cancel the sine and get hex by itself, you had to do inverse sine. And whatever you do on one side of the equation, you do on the other. So you end up inverse signing the fraction 8 over 11. When you put that in a calculator, you should get around 46.7 degrees for your answer.